Do you believe that you can heal yourself? Too often we give our power away to something outside of ourselves and rarely, if ever, trust and tap into our innate healing power and intuition. Everyone has this capability to heal in ways we never thought possible. It's your sovereign right to claim and have true health and lasting wellness. Now, here is the host of the Dr. Dolores Show, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in our wonderful world. You are listening to the Dr. Dolores Show on Inspired Choices Network, and I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, your host. And today we're going to be talking about self-love mastery. Now, a lot of people are like thinking, what the heck is self-love? Oh, you know, I like myself. I, you know, I I take myself to go get a mani petty and I, I love myself, but you know, we're gonna look at taking a deeper dive today. And it's going to be um I encourage you and invite you to go on this journey with me and dive in and see what we could really find for ourselves, those little gold nuggets. Um, self-care, self-love mastery is a transformative journey towards personal empowerment and lasting self-love. In a world filled with chaos and constant demands, don't we know that? It's easy to overlook the most important relationship of all, the one you have with yourself. And I always say this, it's like, you know, the longest relationship you're ever going to have with yourself is the one you have with yourself. Well, that didn't make sense to anyway. It's like the longest relationship you're ever going to have in your life is the one you're going to have with yourself. So there you go. It's like, well, let me get it together here. And how often do we beat ourselves up? Um, if it's not perfect, we start persecuting and punishing and definitely, you know, not being so kind to ourselves. We are probably kinder to our animal friends, our pets, and also to a stranger on the street. But when it comes to us, sometimes we just hold ourselves to such high standards that we shame, uh, abuse, uh, beat ourselves up, persecute and punish ourselves. And also, you know, we feel guilty for for doing anything but that, which is really, you know, something we need to look at. It's time to take that deep dive and go into the deeper places and give yourself permission to receive that kindness, receive that love, receive that, that respect. That is your birthright. You know, sometimes we live through life and we've had amazing experiences. And I'm going to say amazing experiences. And I'm going to couple in with that and include in that all those experiences that we label as not so good. They are amazing experiences. Some of those experiences that have assisted you in building your resilience you know, your staying power that allows you to, to keep carrying on and moving on with your life. So when we start embracing self-love mastery, you're going to learn and you're going to start witness changes that are going to start occurring in your life. Because once we make the changes within the world, there's a saying, the world is a reflection of you. When you start shifting who you are and stepping into your power and your divine authority, which is all aspects of loving self, you're going to watch magic happen in your world. It's really, it's really that simple and it doesn't take a lot of time or effort. You just have to be ready to want to do it. If you're at a point in your life where you know, you feel like you're at you're at your um, end of your tether, so to say, or you've hit your wall, 
or things may have been working well for you prior and now all of a sudden they're not. These are all signs that it may be time to maybe pivot, shift, or even step up and pull up your bootstraps and explore something different. Working on yourself is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I'm going to say that. As a lifelong um, student of self-growth and personal growth, I know that. There are, there are peaks and valleys. There is, you know, sometimes you wonder why you're doing this and for what purpose. And yet there's so many gifts and riches that are available to us once you're brave enough to, you know, even just open the door to this and just leave it open a crack so the light could come in and assist you. So, you know, people often wonder, what is self-love? So let's define self-love. Self-love is the practice of caring for and valuing oneself. It involves recognizing and appreciation, appreciating your own worth, treating yourself with kindness and compassion, and taking actions that contribute to your well-being and personal growth. It's about accepting yourself for who you are, flaws and all, and acknowledging your inherent value as a person and more so as a human being. You are valued, valuable. You are worthy. You are, these are your sovereign rights as a human being. Too often in our society and what we've had to entail, you know, getting to the points that we are like in our family uh, families of origin and stuff like that. Somehow we have been exposed to a different way of, of, of acceptance and um, impossibility, which really isn't our true essence of who we are. When you come back to self-love, this is about being reconnected with that innocence that each of us has when we are first incarnated or born into this lifetime. And then all of a sudden things happen in our world and that slowly chips away at that pureness and innocence. And we start questioning those aspects of who we truly are because somehow we may be different or we don't fit in or our parents, you're different from your family of origin and your family is trying to mold you into what their definition of what normal should be. And it could be, it could be that, you know, you're supposed to be taking care, you have these responsibilities, all these ancestral things that have come through your lineage, through your parents and through your grandparents and their, you know, parents and grandparents before that. And somehow this is not your stuff, but you are, it's projected onto you to take this on. And when we're energetic beings and youngsters, we are very moldable, very um, innocent, and we want to please mommy and daddy, and we want to be loved and, you know, and appreciated in our lives. So we sometimes bend over backwards to do these things when we know at a very unconscious level that that probably isn't the way it has to be, but this is like a survival technique to get you through that part of your life. The good news is we could revisit that without experiencing that and heal that up and slowly take your power back. Now I'm going to share this because I think this is an important thing. If you could vision your soul or the essence of who you are as this beautiful diamond, and when something happens every time you have something happen in your lifetime where it deeply impacts you, where it's almost like part of your soul, part of that diamond fractures off and gets trapped into another time and place. Okay, 
this is kind of what's happening on an unconscious basis. But part of us gets trapped or time locked in another another uh, time and place. An aspect of ourselves gets time locked in another another uh, place and time. And so what happens is that over our lifetime, if you've had many of these um, episodes where you've been wounded somehow or something as traumatic has happened, it's almost like a part of us gets fractured off and gets stuck in another time and place. So when that happens, we kind of relive everything and the patterns keep going on automatic until there's that awareness there that this is happening and it allows us to um, step into the present timeline with that old energy and actually call back our lost fragmented parts of that diamond to bring it back to the diamond so we we um, start gaining wholeness and the healing healing happens um and sometimes all it takes is just the awareness it might have that trapped part of yourself that kind of uh fractured off and is in another time and place may have just been you know an emotion or a grieving process that was not complete it was like you know when you partially experience an emotion and like maybe your family member says stop crying don't feel what happens is that you get stuck there and you start making up whatever stories and your life continues on from that point with that lens of being stuck so when you're able to incorporate and pull that aspect back to yourself that's where a lot of healing comes and you could just change the timelines. I know this is a little on the abstract esoteric thing, but this is kind of what happens. So when we are mastering self-love, part of us is calling back the pieces that have fragmented off from our, from our soul essence to come back home, to love and embrace those parts that are stuck in another place and time. And when you are able to um, send the violet flame of Saint Germain there, that, that actually helps with healing, but also calling back those parts and just loving and appreciating them, sending lots of love and light to them, you're able to allow those to reintegrate into your essence and allow you to become more complete and whole within yourselves. You're going to be able to gain more wisdom and energy, and it's going to, uh, it's going to clear out a space that's going to allow you to put something of your choosing into that, be it a creative type of process, or maybe it is opening the space to experience something completely different that is more aligned with your completeness as a um, intact soul essence. So just something to think about. It's a shamanic approach to things and it's very simple. When you're able to collect your pieces from your past, love and appreciate them just as they were, accept them, it's like calling back parts of yourself that have been lost in another time and place that have actually probably have contributed to what you're currently going through right here, right now in this moment. And when you're able to incorporate that back into your life, you're going to experience more magic, more certainty, and the be ability to be right here, right now in the present moment. So we're going to be 
segueing off to our first break. And you have been listening to the Dr. Dolores Show, and I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. And you're listening to the Inspired Choices Network. Come online and, and join the conversation with us. We'd love to have you on board here. So take care and we'll see you soon. Do you trust your instincts? Many of us don't. Yet this is the key to connecting to your innate healer within and your intuition. Tune in to The Dr. Dolores Show with nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, to receive insights and tools to realign with your inner wisdom for lasting health and true wellness. Listen for The Dr. Dolores Show, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific, on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Dr. Dolores Show with Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Dolores at drdoloresfazino.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, everybody. We are talking about self-love mastery today on the Dr. Dolores Fazino Show with myself, Dr. Dolores Fazino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive energy whisperer on Inspired Choices Network. And before the break, we were talking about going back in your timeline and recapturing parts of your soul that have been trapped in another time and place. We all have them, trust me on that. And sometimes we don't find out about them until we're ready to deal with that. Now, Sarah has mentioned something here in the feed. Um, she said, this is reminding me of an energy healing session I did it was called soul retrieval. Exactly. This is what it is. It is soul retrieval. It's like part of our soul gets fractured off and lost in another time and place. I remember this is an interesting story. Um, I grew up on the East Coast and I now currently live in Southern California. So it was really interesting because every time that I would fly back um, to Connecticut, I would swing by my old early childhood home and sit outside of that and just be drawn to that. And I couldn't understand why until I started doing some deeper work with myself. I left part of me there in that house in one shape, uh, way, shape or form. And it wasn't until I was able to go back to find out why that I got the, the richness of what it was all about. And to able you know, was able to embrace whatever the emotion was that was caught there, love and appreciate it and reintegrate it with myself that I'm no longer interested in going back there to sit in front of that house, which is kind of interesting. Think about things in your life where you're kind of, you know, you kind of have a memory of something. It's a good or bad thing, but, you know, it could be a positive thing or not so positive thing, but it's like part of you is lost and, and stuck in another time and place. So it's call, calling back all your stuckness to unstuck and get re reacquainted with a newer version of you. So anyway, um, yeah, and Sarah said it was an amazing healing session. They usually are because what happens is that you are, when you reintegrate part of yourself, it's like you are gaining your power back. It's like, it, it's almost like the... Uh, the rendition of your your energy is going in all these different directions 
And a lot of this, remember, is done is on an unconscious level. So once we start, you know, healing the source of where there's a drain, you get your energy back. And it's just like, oh my God, it's just like you're feeling more complete and whole within yourself. And you're able to be more in the present moment as well. So let's talk more about self-love because um, you know, people think, oh, self-love is, you know, you're being arrogant or a narcissist. No, it's not. It's actually healthy and positive in regard to yourself and involves nurturing a positive relationship with yourself, both mentally, emotionally, and I want to add spiritually, physically, and dimensionally. It could include setting healthy boundaries, practicing self-care, engaging in activities that bring you joy and cultivate a positive self-image. So when, you know, people, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords out there right now, you know, self-love, personal growth and development, emotional intelligence. How do they all kind of come together? Well, self-love is more of a relationship with yourself, whereas emotional intelligence is actually more of a relationship. Well, it, it deals with how we interact with other people, okay? Our self-awareness is the foundational piece in all of these. Self-awareness about where you're not loving yourself enough, where you could better improve yourself without guilting, shaming, or humiliating yourself, okay? This is about having compassion for yourself, treating yourself with kindness, love, and appreciation. And, you know, if things don't, you know, work out, it's not about beating yourself up and thinking you're less than and, and you know, just going down that rabbit hole. It's about learning what you can from the experiences, taking the gold nuggets without getting stuck in it, okay, and moving forward. Many of us are amazingly resilient beings. If you could look at each one of us right now, we've gone through so much in our early lives that sometimes it's an amazing, um, it, it's amazing that we're still here standing with everything maybe some of us have experienced. You know, your resilience is what is, I wanna say one of your secret sauces and your ability to keep moving forward no matter what happens, okay? When, you know, let's, and let's just talk about, back up a little bit, you know, let's talk about like self-talk because I think for many people, it's what we say to ourselves in the uh, quiet of our minds is what is kind of, for me, an aha moment when I first found, found out about this. I recently heard that, do you know that our mind tells us like over, I want to say 150,000 things on a daily basis? That's a lot of stuff. And if you're, those things are the majority of not so nice things that you say to yourself, what is that doing to you? Overall, your physical vessel that your soul is and your essence is housed in in this lifetime in this place and time what we don't know is how things are interconnected and it's never a linear thing i think it's more of a matrix and from what i have experienced in my um in my life, especially tapping into the spiritual side of things, things are connected in ways you have no idea. And when we're able to embrace that and take a step back and, you know, instead of reacting, responding, witnessing, observing, it's a game changer. Now, I know I've talked about this before, but I think this really rings true. You know, there was a scientist by the name of Dr. Mazero Emoto. He actually is from was from Japan. He passed away probably about 10 years ago. But he, in his lifetime, he worked with um, water, studying water. And what he would do is label vessels of water with different words, okay? Like love, appreciation, war, I hate you, 
um, anger. And what he would do is freeze those vessels of waters and look at the crystalline structure under a microscope. Of course, the beautiful things like peace, love, were these beautiful symmetrical crystals that were, you know, like these beautiful mandalas that were just stunningly beautiful. And of course, the words like war, I hate you, they were never formed crystalline, or if they were, they were fragmented, broken, and really not very, they're very pretty. So if you take that a step further, this is a vessel of water, our body's a vessel of water. It's at least 70, 75% fluid. When we are labeling our vessel, our self-talk, what are you labeling your vessel with? Are you labeling it with words of love, appreciation, kindness, compassion versus, you know, I hate you, you're ugly, you're not worth it. You'll never amount to anything. Something to, you know, ponder on. And and if this is, you know, you know, we all do this. It's about the awareness now that you're doing this. When you have the awareness, you're you can shift things like flipping a light switch. It's that easy and things happen that quickly. Okay? So if this may be you or you fall off your rabbit, you're, 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 you know, you fall into the rabbit hole of going down the rabbit hole of creating, you know, more and more garbage in your life, I invite you to just stop, pull yourself out of it. That's the awareness that you're doing it and make a different choice instead of saying, I don't, I, you know, I'm not good enough, or it's just like, say, I love you. You're beautiful. You may get some pushback from your, from your mind from that, but I invite you to continue to do that. Like change the mantra, change the dialogue. You are the only one that can do this for yourself. I can't do it for you. Your neighbor can't do it for you. You have to want to do this enough that you you're going to do it okay there's a saying you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink that's pretty much what it's all about putting yourself first has to be a priority in your life you have to you have to put yourself first so i invite you the next time that you something happens and you notice that your self-talk or what you say to yourself in silence is not so positive, take a baby step and please be aware of it, number one, and then be curious like a child and say, well, I'm going to say that I'm beautiful and see what happens. And just do that for several minutes. Repeat it to yourself. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I'm love. I'm loved, I'm appreciated, I'm valued, because you are talking to yourself and giving yourself the words that you never heard from anybody else. You are giving that to yourself. And that is like one of the best gifts you could give yourself because this doesn't come from somebody outside of ourselves. This comes from within ourselves. And when we start loving and appreciating and valuing who we are, we're going to become unstoppable and truly stepping into your true authentic self with your genuineness. And from that point, your essence radiates out and people are going to a whole different experience is going to be manifesting for yourself because of that, because it all starts with us first. This is where we give from the overflow of our love. This is where we give to others from that overflow. So you've been listening to Self Mastery 
with Dr. Dolores Fazzino on the Dr. Dolores Show on Inspired Choices Network. When we come back, we're going to talk about more things you can do to gain self-love mastery. So see you when we come back. Take care. Do you trust your instincts? Many of us don't. Yet this is the key to connecting to your innate healer within and your intuition. Tune in to The Dr. Dolores Show with nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, to receive insights and tools to realign with your inner wisdom for lasting health and true wellness. Listen for The Dr. Dolores Show, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific, on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Dr. Dolores Show with Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Dolores at drdoloresfazzino.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, everybody. We're talking about self-love mastery today, and you're on the Dr. Dolores Show, and I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, and you're on Inspired Choices Network. So come on, on board. If you're here live, we would appreciate you just hopping onto the conversation and sharing your questions or any information that you may have. So before we um, went on break and earlier in our segments, we were talking about self-love, self-love mastery and self-compassion and also, you know, a little bit of soul retrieval where we call back parts of our um, essence or soul that have been trapped in another place in time. And when we're able to start calling back our pieces, so to say, we become more complete and whole within ourselves. And when we're more complete and whole in ourselves, that essence that radiates out does, you're going to witness some amazing things happen in your world. Because remember, the world is a reflection of you. If there's something that you're not liking what you see, you know, in, in your world that you're seeing, I invite you just to, um, you know, don't go down the rabbit hole of react, just kind of pull yourself back and just observe and contemplate. It's like, this is triggering me. Why is that? So it might be, you know, something about that particular situation that when you look at yourself, uh, there's a part of you that probably is aligned with that, resonates with that, or something that needs to be healed within yourself as well. So that's an, a barometer or an indicator sometimes of where you may need to look to, to um, self-evolve yourself and help with your, your healing and ascension process. You know, it's so funny, many of us are programmed to think, oh my God, they're doing it to me. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. well, you know what, guess what? That's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> There's more going on under the surface. But just to the fact that this triggered you is a, is a flag for you to say, okay, I'm being triggered. And why is that so? And look deeper within yourself. Because sometimes as soon as you're able to shift that within yourself, that whole thing changes. Because what you're seeing out there is no longer a um, alignment with what's inside you, okay? And I know that was a little bit of a sidebar there, but that is kind of how it works. So, you know, we were talking about self-awareness 
and our self-talk um, and about having self-compassion for our, ourselves as well. You know, with that also comes boundaries, setting boundaries. And, you know, for some people, that's a big challenge because we, you know, if especially you're, if you're an empath, intuitive and highly sensitive person, boundaries are um, a, I, wouldn't, I wanna say challenge, but it's like something that we aspire to work a little harder at to be more self-aware of where our boundaries are because a lot of times we aren't. It's like boundaries to somebody like myself, who's an empath, intuitive and highly sensitive person are very nebulous. Sometimes you don't know where you end and something else begins. And sometimes it's so easy for it to enmesh like this. So you think that what this, what's happening over here is yours, but in essence, it's not, you just are enmeshed with it. So one of the most effective ways that I think works for people and it's it's this by the laws of the universe nothing is allowed to come into your space unless you allow it the thing is a lot of things are in our space because we have allowed it on an unconscious level so when we are moving from unconsciousness to consciousness this is where we have our power and the ability to choose something different okay the self-awareness part is key so when we are more self-aware that we're like something's coming in our space and you're, you know, you don't really know, you know, oh my God, is this my stuff? Is this somebody else's? Because, you know, you're just so wired so differently that you feel everything. And the discernment is about where, you know, what's my stuff and what somebody else's is. The easiest thing you could do is just say by the laws of the universe, if this is not my stuff, it needs to remove itself from my energy field immediately. And usually it will dissipate and you will find a shift within yourself and then you're able to, to realize that. The other thing that's important as well is what you can do to surround yourself. I always surround myself with um, white light when I go into places and I go into a lot of different places and let me tell you energetically hospitals are like what I call a shit show um, because there's energy flying around there like you have no idea and for me to be able to go into those places and still be within my beingness is I incorporate my higher self the bigger part of my soul to come into my essence and so when that happens, it's just like you have more of a Teflon coating. The stuff that comes to you kind of falls off to you. Your higher self is um, the bigger part of your soul. When we come and incarnate onto this earth, only a fraction of that bigger soul comes with us, okay? That's why our higher self we could be probably living in many different places in different galaxies. Okay, I know this is out there for some people, but this is very true as well. So when we are connected to our higher self, that inner wisdom that we have, we're able to access that, tap into it and have it assist us. This is like being in, in partnership with the bigger part of you. Too often we are thinking we are the lone ranger. We're here by ourselves and we have to do it all ourselves or we have to figure it out all by yourself. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty exhausting to me. I feel that sometimes just asking higher self, merge with, merge with me now is one of the best tools that I could um, and gifts I could give myself because it allows me to allow this essence to come in. And for me, it's like this overwhelming sense of peace and comfort that no matter what is happening around me, I could maneuver and be fully in the present moment grounded in right here, right now. So I invite you to do those two things for yourself. The other thing is, you know, being in a state of gratitude and we're in our fall season now and there's a lot you know it's the end of the year and you know we've had 
Thanksgivings, both, you know, Canadian and American coming up and, you know, it's the holidays, there's, you know, all different religious uh, aspects are having their holidays at this time too. And it's, you know, when you look at the foundational piece of a lot of them, it has a lot to do with thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation. So the more that you could focus on those things of what you're appreciative of, even though you're going through maybe a real bump in the road on your, you know, on your path, is I invite you to, you know, observe what's happening, you know, may not be so positive, but try to find three things about that situation that you are grateful for or appreciative of. And that might be a stretch for some people, <laughs> but the thing is, is that, you know, if for some odd reason, you know, you're ending a relationship, you could, you know, be thankful for the gifts that this person gave you um, of, you know, friendship, companionship, what you've learned from them, what you, you know, you're appreciative of the fact that I get to choose again and create something even better. So looking at what was, especially what was the, uh, the bump in the road and, and being grateful and appreciative. I'm always grateful and appreciative that when stuff like that happens, I'm getting upgraded. So that's like, yes, please. Thank you. I'm looking forward to what's next. Okay. The other thing to remember is, you know, we talked about mindfulness and presence and healthy boundaries and your positive self-talk self-care. Um, you know, sometimes, and this incorporates boundaries, it's like self-love is like this matrix of all these things that we're sharing here. <laughs> so it's like, it kind of comes, you know, there's not one linear thing. Self-care is about, you know, if there's something you don't want to do, please don't do it. It's about trusting your intuitive ability to um, make the right choices for you in the moment, not, you know, what you should be doing because you want to please X, Y, and Z, or because you have to, because when we do things, when I call them like that, they're half baked. So when you show up, you show up half baked and you're not giving a hundred percent of your true essence of who you are. So self-care is about being selective of where you're going to put your energy okay every party that you're invited to may not be the right thing to go to every party and if you think you are if you're wanting to do that great and you're doing it because it's all a hell yes but if you're like you know resistant or there's like you're like you're wishy-washy about something that's an indicator to decide not to decide in the moment, kind of sit with that a little bit and really feel into it, whether or not it's a good thing for you, if it's aligned with you, or is it something that's going to take you away from where you're going? Classic example is like many of us may be self-employed and it's just like, yes, going to networking events could be a fun thing, but is it going to allow me to get where to where I need to go? Or is it going to uh, hinder me. So a lot of times it's just checking in with self. If it's like, if there's an event coming up and I'm leaning in to me, that's like a, yes, I need to go. If I, there's an event coming up and I'm kind of leaning back, it's just like, no, I don't think this one is aligned with me. It's learning how to trust that inner wisdom that you're getting that allows you to take better self care of yourself. Okay. It's about allowing yourself to receive this information, this download that you're, you're getting and taking divine action as to whether or not you participate or not. So my gosh, I can't believe that we're almost three quarters of the way through our program today. I mean, I mean, there's been a lot of things that we shared. Um, when we come back, we're going to just give you like the top five things that are important that you could really um, start to implement in your life to start making those changes and start you on your journey to self-love mastery. So you've been listening to the Dr. Dolores Show. I'm Dr. Dolores Vizzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive and energy whisperer, and you've been listening to self 
Love Mastery on Inspired Choices Network. So when we come back, we'll talk more about what you can to get the can do to get the most bang out of your buck to get you on your path to your self-love mastery. Do you trust your instincts? Many of us don't. Yet this is the key to connecting to your innate healer within and your intuition. Tune in to the Dr. Dolores Show with nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer, Dr. Dolores Fazzino, to receive insights and tools to realign with your inner wisdom for lasting health and true wellness. Listen for the Dr. Dolores Show, Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific, on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Dr. Dolores Show with Dr. Dolores Fazzino, nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Dolores at drdoloresfazzino.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Dr. Dolores Show. I'm Dr. Dolores Fazzino nurse practitioner, medical intuitive, and energy whisperer. And you're we're on Inspired Choices Network. And Sarah's back here in the thing. She said, oh, thank you for that. You know, what you shared was really great. And she said, I could have these reminders weekly. You know what, Sarah? We all can. Because sometimes we just get so caught up in just living our lives that we forget that we have all this wisdom and all these tools we get caught up in you know in uh in being human that sometimes we you know we forget so we just need to be reminded it's nothing nothing bad or good it is what it is that's it so before we went on break and what we've been talking about this whole uh episode is self-love mastery and you know we talked about uh being aware mindfulness boundaries we talked about um self-compassion which is huge we talked about self-talk what we say to ourselves in the privacy of our own minds it's just like it could be scary in there sometimes it's just like yeah so these are all things that are essential to you know moving forward and developing um you know self-love mastery so let's just recap here Mastering self-love is a holistic process that involves various aspects of your life and mindset. Some things that we're going to review and just, you know, be aware. The five things that I think that are most important are self-acceptance and self-compassion. Embrace your all facets of yourself, including your strengths and weaknesses. Accept that you are unique and a unique individual with a combination of qualities and it's okay not to be perfect so i want the recovering perfectionist to like inhale take a deep breath and put it on a shelf for a while avoid comparing yourself with others and recognize that you your worth is inherent self-care prioritize your well-being by engaging in regular self-care activities you know and that's inclusive of physical health, mental, emotional, spiritual, dimensional, and, um, and, uh, you know, epigenetic health as well, too. Um, you know, make sure you're getting enough rest, um, and engage in the activities that you want to be in, not the ones that you were told to or voluntold to, where there could be strings of resentment, because when you show up half-baked, that's not good for you or anybody else that surrounds you. The positive self-talk, pay attention to your inner dialogue and challenge negative thoughts. Remember, everything changes in, in a flip of a switch. It's that quick. Replace self-critical thoughts with positive, positive information. Speak to yourself with the same kindness and encouragement that you would offer to a dear friend. Over time, positive self-talk can shape a more loving self-perception. And remember, it all starts with us first. So when you start shifting that, what happens on the internal is going to be reflected out on the external. You're going to see some amazing things happen. And that's a great indicator for you that something's occurring. Boundaries, 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 very important. 
<laughs> set healthy boundaries in your relationships and learn to say no when necessary and communicate your needs and limits to others. Respecting your own boundaries helps prevent feelings of overwhelm and ensures that you prioritize your own well-being. And one thing I want to add to that, remember it's in how we deliver the message, okay? One thing that I'm going to share with you, if you ever have to, you know, share difficult messages or difficult news with anybody, or you're on the rabbit hole of going down to react, just pause, take a deep breath and move your energy from your head down to your heart. If you need to put both your hands over your heart and just take a deep breath and speak from here, not here. Believe me, when you speak from here, you may not know how what words to say, but if you're going to say the right thing and do it in a way that's kind and respectful and not as if it's going to put the other person on, on the defense. When you come from a place of love, you will always say the right thing, even though you might not know it's scripted, you know, your scripted thing in your mind. It's just speak from your heart and allow it to flow. Mindfulness and presence. Practice mindfulness to stay present in the moment. This involves paying attention to your thoughts and feelings without judgment or criticism. Be, by being, your, uh, being present, you can develop a deeper understanding of yourself and your emotions, fostering a more compassionate relationship with yourself. Remember that mastering self-love is a continuous process and it's okay to encounter challenges. Yes, we will all fall off, you know, the apple cart. Be patient with yourself. Celebrate the progress you made. Consistency and commitment to your own well-being are key elements in developing a strong foundation of self-love. So segueing on to next week, what we're going to talk about is Love, Heal, Thrive, Your Personal Growth Journey. And just a little bit about next week's episode. Step into the transformative world of Love, Heal, and Thrive, where love is the anchor, healing is the path, and thriving is the destination. In this episode, we delve into the profound journey of self-discovery and growth, offering you practical wisdom and guidance for your own empowerment. Love, the most important force in the universe, is not just a word, it's a way of being, a transformative energy that can shift your life's course. Healing is the bridge between love and thriving. Explore holistic modalities, both ancient and modern, that help you embark on a journey of self-restoration. And then lastly, thriving is the ultimate destination, destination the culmination of love and healing. So join us next week for this. Um, episode, I think, and I know that you won't be disappointed. And it's a journey. It's not a destination. What I want to remind people of is that we are here to learn at the University of Earth to get our PhD. All of this is part of the coursework that we're doing. We get choices. We get to choose what we want to, to um, embark on and what we want to experience. Maybe self-mastery is something that you're considering doing as your next step. As part of self-mastery um, or self-love mastery, if you have problems like quieting your mind and you have that monkey, monkey chatter that's in there, I invite you to go to my website and download a free guided meditation to keep you in the present moment. This will assist with that monkey chitter chatter and you will be more grounded in the present moment. So I'm signing off for now and just remember you are loved, valued, appreciated more than you know and it's time to start being kinder, loving and gentler with yourself. So stay tuned and see you next week and love you. Thank you for listening to the Dr. Dolores Show. Dr. Dolores returns Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, 12 p.m. Pacific 
on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, remember to be kind to yourself and create your best life. You are worth it.